Happy Monday, everybody. I wanted to start this week off with another Monday shout out because it's been a while since we've done those. And this week is kind of a different shout out because you know that in, in my room all around here, we are constantly doing learn through experiences or learn through play like I call it. But learning through experiences can happen in any grade level. And this shout out is kind of special because it's our first like, higher grade level shout out. I've never done one of these. We've always done elementary and shared ideas. So if you've got a junior high teacher that might be interested in this that teaches science, uh, this is a great one. So you're gonna see a video here from my friend Ben. Uh, ben is a junior high teacher way down the hall in, in my building, we're a K building and he teaches junior high. And I happened to be walking by his classroom last week and saw this crazy contraption set up. And you're gonna see it in the video. And I, was, I had no idea what it was for, but I went in to check it out and the story he told behind this and where he came up with the idea from another teacher and how he's teaching it was, was awesome. And I said, hey, can I film this? But it, it didn't fall in the time that I'd be able to get down there and watch it with the class. So he took time out of his evening after school and let me film him telling about it because I wanted to share with all of you too. Now he does credit another teacher in this. So make sure you listen for that. This was not his original idea. He did find it from someone else on YouTube who I will link below. Uh, but I thought it was awesome to teach this to sixth graders. And it just goes to show that no matter what grade level you're teaching, that you can have experiences through or learning through experience in any grade. So take a look at this awesome idea, Ben. Shout out goes to my friend, Mr. Lawrence in junior high. Here it is. Hey guys, so I'm Ben. Uh, I teach sixth grade science here at Saratoga School. Uh, so just a little bit of context uh, behind this little contraption right here. I call it a space time simulator. Uh, I actually can't take credit for it. Uh, if you look up uh, on YouTube, Dan Burns uh, space time simulator, you'll see that uh, a guy out in uh, California who teaches high school physics actually came up with the idea with this. Maybe he didn't, maybe he got it from someone who knows. Uh, but I got this uh, from the internet, of course, and uh, if you go to that video, you can actually look in the comment section, uh, find a little how-to video of how to build something like this. Uh, essentially, PVC pipe. Uh, I used binder clips to hold it on. Um, Four-way stretch Lycra, you can get at a fabric store. Uh, if you know someone who's a good seamstress or is just uh, really solid at putting things together like that, you can do that. I know some bridal stores will actually uh, uh, have pieces of fabric that are this large. To say that this was uh, tough to put together uh, would be an understatement. Uh, definitely not a one-person job. I had my girlfriend help me out with this. Uh, God bless her. He took probably a good two, three hours to put this together. So worth it to put something like this together. Uh, you know, kind of going along with the idea that uh, stuff like this takes a little bit of time, and it does. Um, but, you know, seeing it uh, work out in the classroom and seeing your kids really get engaged and start to understand a tough concept, well, tough concepts rather, uh, like gravity. Uh, inertia. We're in our astronomy unit right now and uh, we're talking about relativity, really. That's what the idea is. Uh, so it's the idea that uh, matter bends space. So I tell my kids, well, uh, when I drop this cue ball onto my space time right here, will it bend space time? And of course, they look underneath and they go, oh yeah, it's actually bending space time because anything with matter, anything that takes up space, bends space time. And when you have two objects that uh, take up space that have mass, uh, and bend space time while well, they are attracted to one another. So ultimately, this totally blows their mind because they just think, oh, well, it'll just, it'll just sink down. They'll both just sink down and then they see that they're actually attracted to one another and then they start calling shenanigans on me and say, Mr. L, you're, th those are magnetic. And so I pass them around and tell them, no, they're not magnetic or anything. It's just mass attracts mass. And so it's a good little way of uh, convey to them more difficult concepts. And something I like to do is put uh, something with a bit more mass. So I got a couple, uh, just two and a half pound weights from Walmart, just stuck them there in the middle. And of course they can see that it's bending space time even more because it has more mass. And I uh, had some ball bearings here that I just got out at Menards. You can get some from Amazon too. Uh, very cheap, uh, but something like a ball bearing. You can just roll around and they'll, uh, see that it actually orbits. And I try to inform them of the concept of inertia, that if you send it in a straight line, it's gonna to want to continue in that straight line. However, it cannot, because the force of gravity is slowly but surely drawing it in to, towards that larger mass. And where it gets really funky is when you start getting multiple objects. So let's say I have two small ball bearings. And well, they're not magnetic, but they like to stick together. But uh, you take a very, very, a larger satellite like this one, and then, I don't know if the camera will be able to see yeah, it, but a very it. small one, like so. You throw them together, hmm, perhaps we can get a little sun, earth, moon model going on here. You can actually see That's that awesome. the smaller one is orbiting the larger satellite. 
And that one blew the kids' minds. They were thinking, there's no way. It's this, crazy. This, this is absolutely crazy, Mr. L. And so they love seeing stuff like that. Um, you know, I use a little five pound medicine ball that kind of represents a good planet right there. And that's when they go, oh, you know. So yeah, they, they really get a kick out of this. Uh, a good thing for them to do, because you know, you want to give the kids time to mess around with it and kind of experiment with it on their own because inquiry, that's kind of the point of science. Um, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, seeing how you can accomplish certain goals and whatnot. For my lab, I just had the kids hypothesize. I gave them certain scenarios and I had them, you know, use the typical if then. So if Mr. L tosses a large and a small satellite around a large mass, then what will happen? So I kind of had them uh, take educated guesses as to what would happen, but uh, where they really got a kick was with marbles. So again, not attracted to each other via magnetism, just matter. So the idea that ultimately in the fabric of space-time, objects with matter will attract. Anyway, so if you want to see a really good representation, actually where I got the idea to uh, do this little lab demonstration with my students, uh, just go on YouTube, search Dan Burns uh, uh, Space-Time Simulator, and uh, you'll see the original. Um, and like I said, in the comments section, it'll give you a, a link to uh, a, I think it's called uh, Good Physics or Better Physics something kind of webpage where you can actually find a video where he uh, gives a, a specific um, materials list that you can use to build your own space-time simulator and check it out. So again, like I said, that that is such a cool way to teach that concept. Like, it's not a concept that I even understood at first or how it worked, but as as someone stepped in that room, and especially a student stepped in the room, imagine how much fun those kids had coming into a junior high classroom on a Monday morning or a Tuesday morning and seeing something like that set up. Just to see it first and then to see it in action and, and think about all the learning that was going on there between that. So huge shout out to you, Mr. Lawrence. Awesome idea. Again, this was our first uh, junior high share, I guess, but I, this is one of the things that this channel was kind of developed for, was to share ideas across all teaching platforms and levels. And I'm hoping that we can do some more of that. Uh, so if you've got any cool ideas for other grade levels, feel free to share them with me and I'll, I'll put them out there. Um, I'm always looking to give shout outs to teachers who are kind of going above and beyond. And it's funny because this kind of happened after last week when I was talking about the work it takes to put into things. And it was cool to see Ben here. You know, it was like five o'clock on a Monday night and he was here working his butt off trying to get that ready. So uh, again, it goes back to that whole thing that teaching is not an easy job, like I said last week, and uh, sometimes takes that extra effort. So great job going above and beyond, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, awesome, awesome idea. I hope you guys like that and can share it with a friend of yours. Again, check the link below for where that idea came from that he found, because we've got to give credit where credit is due. But uh, shout out to Mr. Lawrence, and uh, please share and tag a teacher who might find that interest in their class. I'm gonna even show it to my kids sometime to show them how cool it looks and how it works because the kids are always fascinated by space and things like that. Uh, that's it for today. Happy Monday, I'll see you guys later this week.